YouTube, Rook here from Rook Geek Goodness, my little channel web for all things geeky and cool. And welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to a brand new action figure review and unboxing. As mentioned before in a previous video, I really wanted to really dive back into The Mandalorian, which season two is now fully underway. As far as recording this video, I have not yet seen season two. I will be seeing it shortly, but I want the full all set of videos to drop before I really get involved in the Disney Plus description again. I'm shooting this video a little bit differently compared to how I shoot it before, where I have a full intro. I'm going to skip the intro, maybe going forward in my video segment series. I'm not sure yet. Let me know in the comment section if you think doing it better this way as a both doing it in the past. I'm going to go straight into breakdown and really dive deep into these figures. Well, you see two guys in front of me right here. We have the Mandalorian, which is this one right here, the standard release figure, and then we have the carbonized version of the Mandalorian. There were really three figures released on what they call Triple Force Friday and was part of New York Comic Con weekend of 2019, which is where these figures dropped. As I mentioned, there were three figures that were released, but you only see two figures here in the video because I don't have the third figure, which we'll talk about that shortly. We're really talking about this figure right here, the black box, or what they call the Black Series Mandalorian number 94 figure. I want to just talk briefly about this one here, the carbonized version, because on the Triple Force Friday was the first time we saw what they called the carbonized version of an action figure, which is basically a fancier packaging. They made a high gloss, high finish version of the figure, different than the traditional figure that you see over here. And they changed it up a little bit and charged a higher price point for it. I believe the price point, I want to say, was either $20 or $22. The Carbonized, which is this guy right here, this one, was $24.99. I can tell you that with, with no doubt in my mind because I bought both these figures on Triple Force Friday. As I mentioned, there was a third figure that I don't have here because I wasn't able to get my hands on it, what they call the first edition version of the Mandalorian, which is the same figure as this one right here, just with a white packaging. There's no difference. If you took the figure out of box, took out all the accessories, took the figure out, and light them side by side, they would have the same markings, it would be identical. The only difference was this thing right here, the packaging with the white box with a showcase for you, so you can see what it looks like right now. All right, guys, introduction out of the way. Let's really focus on the Mandalorian Black Series 6 inch figure 94 this guy right here this one we're going to remove the carbonized figure from this video from now on because we don't want to focus on that one we want to focus on what brought you to the video this guy right here the very first figure in the six inch scale for the black series for the mandalorian this bad boy right here very very cool figure on first impressions first glance looks really really cool and that is our basic portion of our breakdown on first impressions we want to take a look at the packaging and presentation first about this guy so let's really focus on it right here of course we have star wars right here at the top Typical Black Series package. We've seen this before. Nice window box display. You see the Mandalorian here and all his accessories very prominently displayed on the side of the packaging here. He doesn't have the jetpack on this figure. That's in the Besker version of it. The, the upgraded version near the end of the Mandalorian season one. He gets a better suit of armor. That's a different figure, different review altogether. So a uh, very cool figure. Over here we have where it says the Mandalorian. Let me get the wording right there, right there. It says Mandalorian. It says Mandalo right there on the back. You can see it right there. Nice red stripe. We've seen this before. The number, number 94 in the series. If you ever see a Black Series figure with no number here, that means it's an exclusive to that store. It's usually a one-off, uh, just so you know now. Uh, right here we have the back of the packaging, which showcases a nice shot of Mandalorian and some text. I'll let you guys take a read if you want to pause the video and take a look at it right there. Let's get this guy on back on the pedestal here and go for a 360 so you can see what he looks like in 360. And then what we'll do is take this guy out of package and continue the breakdown segment. I did notice one key piece to this figure, very reminiscent for the Boba Fett figure in the six inch scale for, for the black series. I want to really hit home on that piece when we get to it, when we get this guy out of package. All right, guys, we have our Black Series Mandalorian number 94 out of packaging. The next thing we do in a breakdown figure, we take a figure out of packaging, is look at the paint and articulation. And there's a lot going on with this figure. Just a quick hands-on I've had with this figure for the last 10, 15 minutes playing around. I did notice a couple of very interesting things. So let's really get into it. First, let's take a look at that paint job. It looks really, really cool. The mismatched armor. The armor is not universal through the entire figure. He has different parts all over the figure, meaning uh, like this leg piece right here is not the same as this armor. This armor pack it's not the same as this armor piece here. The shoulder pad, which is this one right here, is not the same as this shoulder pad. Uh, for quality control issues, this may be an issue with your Mandalorian figure. Be aware. I was just moving the arm up, just moving it to this position here, straight up, and this shoulder pad popped off. Be aware about this. It may be a quality control issue because this was the first set of Mandalorian figures that were released on, on uh, Triple Force Friday, so it may be a QC issue. I found a possible second QC issue, which we'll talk about that shortly. But let's look at that head sculpt. Great 
great head sculpt. It looks very similar to, let's say, Bubba Fett's helmet because this is a Mandalorian. This is Mandalorian armor. This is what, of course, Bubba Fett has, but that head sculpt screams Mandalorian to me. It is weathered. It is beaten up. It has seen a lot of use. Looks very, very good. The copper-colored armor he has has been battle damaged. Looks very, very good. He has a strap that goes across right here. Uh, there's also an issue with the strap going right here. You notice there's a back hole peg and a peg right here in this back uh, belt. Uh, the gun here, which we'll talk about this shortly here, I think is a quality, another, the quality control issue I was talking about. I think there's a QC problem with this gun because he can't hold it properly, which I, I'll talk about that shortly. He does have this solid uh, plastic cape that dangles. It's not a soft good material. Looks very good. It's sculpted in place. You can see the paint. Uh, it has a hood like pulled back. Looks very, very cool. Going back to the front of the figure, he does look really, really neat. I love the way this guy looks. Let's do a real quick 360 on my platform here so you can see what he looks like in 360. Looks very, very sharp. Very cool looking figure. Let's get a little closer so you can see what it looks like here. Hopefully he doesn't fall down. Um, very neat figure. Uh, very, very cool design. Love the way this guy looks. Screams Mandalorian like he's coming right off the screen. They did a very, very good job taking that screen images and making an action figure out of this guy. Looks really, really neat. Again, battle damage, all worn. Doesn't have the same color armor. I'll review that again real quickly here. Just because it's very, very stark in look. Because you can see it's all beat up, especially the chest armor. It's like, you know, it looks like it hit some blaster bolts to it. Very, very cool figure. Now let's talk about that articulation. The head will spin through. 360 with no hindrance and you have up and down. I love the web level of articulation here. I'm not going to move this arm because I talked about that before. This shoulder pad will come right off the figure. Let's move this out of the way. This arm will come up here. The shoulder does move up a little bit to compensate for this. It does slide up. It does have 360 movement here. Uh, he has a, let's take a look at the arm. He has a bicep, but the bicep is very cool. It's a different joint. It will swing and spin the arm 360 at the at the forearm here. He does have, it looks like a single jointed uh, elbow. It's a single joint cut right there. Wrist will spin 360 and he has a, uh, he has a trigger finger out. And we'll talk about the trigger finger in a second because the gun is very, very weird. That long rifle, that disintegration rifle that a Mandalorian uh, sports is very, very weird. Never seen a gun like look like this on an action figure. Very, very odd. The chest, of course, looks very good. He does have, it looks like an ab crunch. He does have it and does go forward and back. Let's take a look at that range of motion here. The shoulder pad may pop off. I do apologize about that. So he does go back about that far. He goes in about this far. The belt here, the shoulder piece will buckle and kind of puff out. Well, not buckle, but it rather puff out to give it more range of motion. Be aware of that. Again, the cloak here does not have any type of articulation. It just, it's a hard piece of plastic. Again, be aware of that. Legs are very, very weird. This is another piece I saw Going through this originally, when I first took a look at this figure, there's an issue with this leg in particular. So well, let's talk about the articulation. He can bend his leg, move his arm out of the way, about that high up without moving this leg, meaning I'm not swiveling it. If I swivel, I can get to about that far. Very similar to the Bubba Fett, and I go back to that figure a lot in this review because there was issues with the sculpt. Because if I try to move this leg up here, I can only get this far because of clearance. You'll see it right here. I'll kind of pull it down so you can see. This plate digs into his hip right here, comes up. The only way to get this leg past this amount of motion right here, this range of motion, is to turn the leg to bypass this hip piece right here. So if I turn it sideways, I can move his leg straight up. When I bend it, you can get a, it does have a 90, it does have a look at a double jointed knee right here. The knee pad will swivel up. So you can get clearance, but you gotta swivel the thigh to get past it. You can't just keep it in the normal way you would see it like this. You gotta twist the leg to get the clearance to clear, to get this high. Once you get that high, he can get to about a 45 degree angle with his kick. As far as the articulation on the rest of the figure, uh, there is no thigh cut here. Here. There is a toe articulation, there's a foot articulation rather, not toe. It will spin 360 and you have up and down. I like that a lot. I was trying to pose this guy and I saw a lot of problems trying to get him to just stand. Um, maybe it's just me, maybe it's my figure, I don't know. That's why the pose looks very, very peculiar here. Now I mentioned before, before I get into the accessories, let's take a look at the character's back. Normally I don't talk about that on reviews, but this is kind of important. When you come around to the back of the figure, you'll see the belt that I've been talking about right here, which is sculpted, you see paint, you see all sorts of stuff, adornments to it, it looks very, very cool. When you come to the back, you'll see a hole right here. This hole has another hole in the back, like the leather piece right here, this band, which I'm holding in my hand. There's a hole here and then a hole in the back. 
It doesn't line up correctly. When I got this out of package, it was glued in place into, oh, there goes the shoulder pad. As I mentioned, it'll come off. I'll leave it off for the rest of the video now. Um, but you can see right here, this piece was glued in this orientation. I believe the way this should work is that you plug the rifle, because if you look at this rifle, there's a spot right here, which will get focused more on the rifle in a second, but there's a spot right here that will plug into both this belt right here and the back so the character can support this rifle across his back. That's the idea of this. So it would look something like this. Uh, again, mine doesn't look right, and I'll showcase that in a second, but it looks really cool if you can pose it this way. This, I think, is a quality control issue with both the either the flash, the material they have on the back of the gun, or the hole here is not drilled deep enough. One of the two is incorrect. Maybe both. I don't know. Let's take a look at the accessories now real quick before I kind of delve even deeper. First, let's take a look at that rifle. This is the rifle he sports in the Mandalorian TV show. A very cool looking weapon. Long rifle. He has a stock on the end of it here. And he has a looped what loop air with the trigger would be. Mind you, there's no physical handle on this rifle. Very, very weird rifle. I mentioned that a second ago. It's very neat. He has that sort of uh, tuning fork at the very front of the rifle here. It's nice and weathered. You see the scope right in front here. I'll get an up close shot of the rifle so you can see more detail of this weapon. It looks very, very neat. Now, I mentioned a second ago, there's this weird peg right here. It's not for the rifle to be turned sideways like this for the man wanting to hold it. This pegs into the back, as I mentioned. This material doesn't look like it's finished or there's a lot of what they call flash uh, extra material sticking on the back of this this probably could be sanded down or uh, cut off maybe that might fix the problem but out of box it's not correct there's definitely a problem with this rifle he comes with a second item, this pistol. This pistol right here looks really, really neat. Nice weathered pistol, kind of hopefully you can see it right there. Nice shot of it right there. It has a kind of gun metal with a black handle. He can hold this pistol and it can go into his uh, holster here. So let's put it into his holster and there's a clip on the holster that will clip it in place. So if you notice, let me get it real close here. That's inside his holster and there's this little piece that dangles up that can just clip right in to keep the weapon in position. So if you wanted to keep it plugged in, it would look like that. Very, very cool way, an actual functional holster. Love the way this thing looks, looks very, very neat. Uh, I didn't even know about this little hook until a second ago. He can hold the gun. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, he does have a trigger finger. All right guys, so I made a quick adjustment. That's how he would hold the pistol with his finger through the trigger guard. Looks really cool, looks neat. Um, I love the way it looks, and especially it's kind of sculpted to hold in his hand. So it looks very, very cool there. I love the way this thing looks. Now getting it out, Let's put it back in the holster real quick here. Hopefully I don't break his finger. Uh, again, I think there's a lot of quality control issues with this figure, uh, at least on first glance. Between the issues with the shoulder pad, of course, this guy popping off right here, and the gun not kind of fitting correctly, looks weird. Now, if you try to sit this in his hands, as I mentioned, there's no real physical handle to, for him to hold this gun. It, it, I can only make the assumption he would hold it through the trigger, and then he would get something along this sort of lines like that but you would notice uh let me put the cape back here. You notice, like, if you look at it, normally Mandalorian would have his hand, like, holding the barrel, like, underneath the barrel. It may be difficult to try to get that sort of pose because the stock is so long. This stock is so long, and you can't really put it under really well to kind of, for him to kind of hold on. Try to get some shots of him holding this weapon properly, some up-close shots and post, so you can see what it looks like. Last piece, I want to try to get it across his back so you can see what I'm talking about here. So let me get it out of his hand, and I'm going to hook it just inside the leather strap right here. That's where I'm going to hook it to see if I can actually at least get this properly done. It won't fit through the first hole, so I know this absolutely works. So when you go through the first hole here, it does go and line up. So I do know, and these way these holes line up, they line up uh, on top of one another. So I know this is absolutely correct, but it will not go through this hole. No matter how much pushing I do, I can't get it there. So let me just hook it through the belt only. So you can see kind of what it would look like with it across his back. It does look neat. I do like the way it looks. This may be the way I even uh, uh, showcase the figure off on a shelf. Maybe not even having him with the uh, gigantic rifle in his hand because it's just so long to the figure. It doesn't work right with me. Again, apologies for the shoulder pad coming off. That's something to be aware of. You could you know, run into these problems yourself. Your mileage may vary. But that's kind of what the Mandalorian would look like with it over his shoulder. It looks very, very cool. Again, not really sold on the stance it looks a little goofy here. 
But that's my review of The Mandalorian. Let's go to final thoughts and wrap up this video. All right, guys, final thoughts on the six inch black series figure Mandalorian number 94. Again, the first figure released because of Triple Force Friday back in 2019. This is a love hate relationship with this particular figure, meaning this version that I own of the Mandalorian. I think there's a lot of quality control problems with this figure. The shoulder pad coming off being one of them, that weird leg plate, which I showed during the breakdown portion of the video, where you have to move the leg sideways to get the leg up. Very reminiscent of Bubba Fett, where the sculpting is, doesn't work right with the figure. It's slides around a lot. The issue, of course, we talked about where the back doesn't fit right with the rifle. It could be just an issue with the rifle itself needing to be kind of sanded down, get all the flash material off to get it to work properly. The gun being very, very long and having no real handle to hold the gun is just a trigger and you kind of tuck it underneath his arm and you can't get the hand around the barrel. I don't know what's going on there or if I'm posing it incorrectly. It's probably me posing it wrong, but I don't think it's right there. Again, you can have him hold it by that weird notch and turn the gun sideways, but it looks very very, very weird to do it that way. But all the bad pieces aside, there's a lot of good with this figure. It looks really good on the shelf. It, again, comes right off the screen from the Mandalorian. It screams Mandalorian when you look at this figure. Again, he's not the carbonized version of the Mandalorian, which is the high gloss, high sheen version, which we showcased at the beginning of this video. This is the standard release Mandalorian and not the first edition Mandalorian, even though if you put them side by side, it'd be the same identical figure, except the packaging. It's the only thing different between those two figures. But I hope you can understand my review, how I feel about this figure. This thing is not a cheap figure, just so you know that right now. For a portion of the final thoughts will be price. How much does this cost right now if you purchased it? I've seen this thing going between $40 and $60 on eBay and on Amazon. It is not a cheap figure, just because of scarcity and it's hard to find this figure. The carbonized one, I think, is between $50 and $80 US. Just be aware of that. If you want to buy this figure, again, your mileage may vary. Mine had a lot of quality control problems. Maybe yours might be better. And I hope you guys like my review and first impressions of the Mandalorian in a six inch scale. Great figure, but there's a lot of concerns I have, again, with the quality control. Remember to click the like button bottom page, click the subscribe button with picture my face, with subscribe to the channel, click the bell, kind of be notified for my latest videos. And of course, last but not least, you'll click windows over here to watch more of my content. Take care guys, see you next video, and bye-bye.